Let us, students, uh, go further deep into the concept of nuclear fusion. We understand that, that fusion is, is a reaction where two lighter nuclei, uh, they, are, they are forced to, to combine and they are unstable and when they combine, they give tremendous amount of energy. Now, what we are trying to hear is to get a rough estimate of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the, 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 the salient features of this, uh, this nuclear fusion. And for that, if, if, if we consider an, uh, an idealized experiment, uh, purely idealized in nature, uh, and in this idealized experiment, we have uh, deuterium gas, uh, deuterium And, and this gas is in, a, in some virtual, virtual I think would be a proper word, a virtual vessel. And uh, made of some, some virtual material which is capable of withstanding enormous amount of temperature. So this vessel is, is a virtual vessel made of some unknown material which can withstand a lot of temperature. And at ordinary temperature and, and, and normal pressure, the energy of the molecules is, on an average, uh, the energy of the energy of uh, molecules. It, it is nearly one by twenty fifth uh, of an electron volt, on an average. And under these circumstances, certainly no reaction is going to take place. Now, if we have a temperature of 5000 degrees celsius and and this huge temperature uh, uh, can, can be a consequence uh, to, 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 a, to the violent collisions and at this temperature the molecules the molecules break down the molecules break down uh, into atoms uh, and and pressure goes up uh, nearly to to 40 to 50 atmospheres. Now, uh, what is important here is that even at this temperature, we don't have enough velocities of the atoms. They are not sufficient to, to even cause a nuclear fusion. Now, let, let the temperature now uh, goes to, uh, say, let the temperature now goes to 100,000 degrees Celsius. It's a huge temperature of the order of 10 to the power of 5 degrees Celsius. And at this very temperature what we have is uh, we have the at this temperature what happens is that we have remarkable property uh, of this 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 virtual vessel that we have chosen and 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 this virtual vessel is capable of uh, 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 is capable of withstanding uh, the, the, the temperature of the order that has been attributed here. Now, if if we would have taken a, a real material of any known material uh, 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 to us, uh, what would have happened to that material at this temperature? That material would have vaporized. So that's why it, it was it was a good assumption to choose a virtual vessel which can which can uh, which can withstand. Uh, Huge temperatures. So now, what happens at this very temperature uh, is that the the deuterium atoms that we have uh, they are broken. So so these deuterium atoms they break. Okay, so they break and 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 what we have is is the charge. We have charge and we have charged nuclei and electrons. So we have nuclei with charges and we have electrons. And, and the gas has become, and the gas has become simply plasma. And the pressure has risen at this stage. At this stage, the pressure goes up to 1500 atmospheres. Now, at this stage, the energy which must be supplied to overcome 
the Coulomb, Coulomb repulsion. What is important here is that we have to overcome the Coulomb repulsion to have nuclear fusion because of the positive charge of, of the two nuclei who are interacting with each other. So we have to supply that much, uh, that much of uh, energy so that there is Coulomb repulsion. And, uh, and that energy, that energy should, should be taken as, say, Z1, Z2, uh, E squared by, uh, say, some R or some R0. Now, these Z1 and Z2, they, will, they, they are representative of the net charge that, that uh, each nucleus has. And, uh, and R0, this uh, can be taken as, uh, as order of size of the nucleus. Uh, uh, and its value can be nearly uh, five times 10 to the power of minus 13 centimeters. And uh, the charge uh, for deuteron in electrostatic units, uh, uh, if we take it four point, it's, uh, it's to be taken 4.8 into 10 to the power of minus 10 electrostatic units. So, so this Coulomb energy that we have, uh, uh, as a crude assumption, what we can do here is that 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 we can equalize this with uh, Maxwellian energy, three by two kT, and and this three by two kT should be z one z two e squared by r naught. Now, if we do this, uh, uh, what we will have is we can make use of those values that I chose uh, approximately. And from this equation, we can we can make use of Boltzmann constant, and we can uh, we can make use of R naught, and we can take Z1 equal to Z2 equal to one. So we can take it uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the charge of the two particles uh, in electrostatic units that that I talked about. So in doing so, we can calculate this T, and what happens? This T nearly comes out to be two times. 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. So using the, 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 the very classical approach uh, to calculate the, the, the approximate temperature that's needed for, uh, for, for, for having a forced interaction between the two nucleuses, the temperature for that is 2 times 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. So certainly at this temperature, fusion reaction is possible. So here we have fusion reaction, and this reaction is possible here. And, and then deutrons will react with one another, uh, and, and energy will be uh, produced, and energy will be produced uh, of the order of uh, 100 million uh, kilowatts. Thus, to, 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 to make the reaction of self-sustaining between, the, the, uh, uh, between the, the combination of these deutrons, what we must have a temperature of the order of 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. And to keep the, uh, to keep the energy output constant, at the same time, we don't want it to happen and happen instantaneously. But we, what we want, that, that reaction is there, but this reaction has to be controlled. It has to be constant. And, and the pressure of the gas uh, in the starting of the experiment, uh, it should be of the order of 10 to the power of minus 4 mm uh, of mercury. And uh, what we have is uh, we, have, we have a possibility of a higher degree of ionization is, is possible uh, if we start with low pressures, very, very low pressures. Now, in order to get an idea regarding the power output uh, from, this, uh, uh, from this nuclear fusion pro process, uh, what we say is that it, it is necessary to have a data on, on, on cross sections. It's a very important parameter. And the cross sections of the thermonuclear processes, thermonuclear processes. Now, by bombarding targets containing deuterium, tritium, or helium, okay, so uh, we, 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 we would like to have bombardment on, we will have, we'll have a situation for deuterium, 
Uh, we'll have a situation for tritium. We will have a situation for helium. And using highly uh, energetic particle accelerators, and uh, it is uh, possible to determine the, the experimental cross section. And we can have a rough estimate of this this, uh, this experimental cross section. If this x axis is deuteron energy, if this is deuteron energy in, in kilo electron volts, and this y axis is sigma, what's that? That's the cross section. Cross section. Uh, uh, this is cross section, and, and this is uh, the, the deuteron energy. Now, we have, we have a graph like this. Let me call it. Let me call it A. And this A curve is for uh, deuteron and tritium reaction. This is giving us the behavior of cross section. So this is A. And then we have B. And B has a behavior like this. And what is B? B is it is deuteron deuteron reaction. And then finally we have we have C and this C is deuteron helium reaction. So what we have we have we have the the, the, the data that's that's plotted um, in terms of cross section versus the energy of the deuteron. Now uh, to have some formal discussion uh, on this graph, what we have is uh, what we have seen is that that this dt curve that we have uh, it exhibits a maxima around the energy of 100 and 15 kilo electron volts, and 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 blow uh, 100 volts for dt cross section is approximately two orders of magnitude rather than that of corresponding to deuteron deuteron reaction you can see that now when this reaction cross section is compared with coulomb in electrostatic cross section say sigma c uh, and this sigma c is six times 10 to the power of minus 19 watt square per centimeter square where this uh, this w is it's it's it, this w is 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 a reference for kilo electron volts okay and uh, uh, and and it is found that this coulomb cross section that we have is larger by at least one order of magnitude for the same value of energy that we have. Therefore, in DD or DT reactions, the number of scattering collisions will be larger than the reacting uh, collisions. So a hot gas with random velocity distribution uh, is a must in order, to, uh, in order to increase the probability of, uh, of undergoing nuclear fusion reaction. Now moving on with nuclear fusion, uh, let's go with this uh, this small uh, important fact that that's essential for carrying the nuclear fusion, uh, whether in terms of uh, deuteron, 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 tritium, uh, and and this criteria gives us the the numerical uh, uh, value uh, that that should be satisfied by, by certain conditions where where we are interested to develop nuclear fusion. So. Uh, so, 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 what am I trying to say is that the, the number of fusion reactions uh, uh, that that uh, that take place in, inside the plasma that that depend on uh, on on some important parameter, what we call as confinement time. And I assume this uh, confinement time t for the time being uh, of the plasma. And what it also depends is the number density of the nucleus, number density of of nucleuses and say that's n now now if i assume a cylindrical plasma if i assume some cylindrical plasma and this plasma has a uh, has a length uh, its length is uh, 
Its length is new bar and tau. Uh, and, and what I have is, uh, is cross section sigma. The cross section is, is sigma. Where this new bar that, that I talked about, this new bar is, is the root mean square velocity uh, of the nucleuses. Root mean square velocity of, of nuclei. And, uh, and, and it may be, it, it, it may be plausible uh, uh, to, uh, to take an assumption that the, that the average particle traverses this volume, that this assumed volume that we have, uh, it traverses this volume, uh, it traverses this, this volume, uh, what's that volume? That will be the, the cross section and, and that will be uh, uh, new bore and, and T of the cylinder at the time tau. Now, when any other particle within this volume can cause fusion reaction uh, with the test particle, if the number density of the particles participating in the fusion reaction that's going, that's supposed to happen uh, uh, by virtue of, of, uh, of a collision, uh, the average number of such particles uh, in the, this given volume uh, uh, for having high probability of, of fusion, what should be the case? This, this uh, sigma, nu bar and tau, uh, it should be greater or equal to one. Now, we can write down the numerical value for, uh, for this, uh, this root mean square velocity, which, which, is, uh, which is obviously the outcome of uh, Maxwell Boltzmann's distribution law, where we calculate those uh, RMS values. So this, this new bar, V bar, is, is 3K KBT by N, uh, whole raised power 1 by 2. So this uh, gives us the measure of the, the root mean square value uh, of the molecules. Where this M is here, what is it? It's basically the nuclear mass. It is nuclear mass. And, uh, and what happens uh, is that, uh, that in order, to have, uh, uh, in order to have a reaction, say deutron-deutron reaction, uh, or deutron-tritium reaction, we come up with a condition, and that condition is this n tau should be greater or equal to 1 by v bar sigma. Okay, so uh, the symbols have their own meanings. Now, this is a criteria where n is, or uh, what is n is, it's the number density uh, per meter cube, and tau uh, is in seconds. And now, if this n tau uh, if this n tau comes out to be greater or equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power of 22 per meter cube uh, second uh, per second per meter cube, uh, uh, then we have deutron deutron reaction. And if this n tau is uh, uh, is greater or equal to 10 to the power of 20 second per meter cube, then this is the condition for deutron tritium reaction so these are basically this uh, this uh, this is what is called as uh, as lawson's criteria so this lawson's criteria criteria gives us uh, a numerical implication where a deutron deutron reaction uh, uh, or a deutron tritium reaction uh, can be instigated uh, under the circumstances and for that the condition is that if this n tau is greater or equal to this much then it's a deutron uh, it, it, it's it's the probability of having DD reaction is is more, and if we have uh, n tau greater or equal to 10 to the power of 20 second per meter uh, meter cube, then the probability of having nuclear fusion uh, in terms of deutron and tritium is uh, is high. So what we have the the important uh, uh, thermonuclear. Uh, the, the conditions that we have for uh, for occurrence of thermonuclear reaction. So, uh, uh, so the very first important point is that uh, that that the fuel of the thermonuclear uh, reaction uh, is deuterium. It is deuterium, 
And the second important uh, uh, condition that we have for, uh, for, for the nu nuclear reaction is that, that a plasma of deuterium is to be produced. We need a plasma, we need a plasma of deuterium. And it should be, it should be heated uh, to a temperature of, uh, it should be heated to a temperature of nearly uh, five kilo electron volts in case of uh, DT reaction, deuterium and, and tritium reaction. And for D, D reaction, deuterium, deuterium reaction, uh, it should be heated up to 100 keV. Now, since the, the, the temperature will be of the order of million degrees as we, uh, as we calculated that, the initial pressure that there should be available to the system, the initial pressure, the initial pressure uh, should be, uh, it should be, it should be small, it should be less of the order of few uh, millitar, few. And the, another important point what we have is the particle density. The particle density of the useful power generation, useful power generation. The particle density in that case should be of the order of 10 to the power of 14 to uh, 10 to the power of 17 uh, particles per centimeter cube. And the Lawson criteria that we talked about, the condition that we obtained for, for Lawson criteria uh, that this uh, nt is greater or equal to 1 by uh, uh, v bar sigma. And the Lawson criteria for dd uh, is given by this equation. And for deuterium-tritium uh, reaction to occur, the, the Lawson criteria should be like this. So uh, if, we, if we go with numbers here, this Lawson criteria that we have, uh, uh, in this case, this n tau that we have, it should be of the order of 10 to the power of 14 uh, per centimeter cube and second, second per centimeter cube for, for, for DT reaction, deuterium-tritium reaction, and, and must be satisfied, which means that tau should be, this tau, this should be at least of the order of it should be at least of the order of one second for n equal to 10 to the power of 14 per centimeter cube. And, and from now uh, th that we have, what we have is the heated plasma. The heated plasma must be contained in a region uh, far from the material. It should be away from the, the material container, but because we have seen that uh, that this temp the, the temperature of this plasma is extremely large. It's of the order of 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. And we had chosen a virtual uh, case, we had chosen a virtual shield, but we don't have any material that can contain uh, a plasma uh, of whose temperature is of the order of 10 to the power of uh, 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. So what is import important here is that, that we have to keep this plasma away from this container. And this is what necessitates the confinement of this plasma the confinement of plasma. In other than that of a container, because for any container that we have available, that will burn down, that will vaporize. Now, uh, uh, so, so what could be the plausible ways uh, uh, or methods which, can gener which are generally being adopted to heat the plasma to very, very high temperatures? of the order of 10 to the power of 9 Kelvin. Now, if we, if we talk of ohmic heating, 
overheating. What we do here, we induce uh, DC electric field uh, by uh, by virtue of current uh, and 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 which heats the resistive plasma. So we can have ohmic uh, heating. We can have cyclotron heating. And RF heating, where energy of the electromagnetic waves is, is absorbed at a particular resonant frequency, nu naught, of the plasma. And from there we have heating. And we can have shock heating. Shock heating. Now, shock heating uh, in which the plasma is compressed and heated by some shock waves. Have a container and you heat uh, the plasma using shock waves. And magnetic heating, which we also call as adiabatic compression. Adiabatic compression. This goes with magnetic heating. And in this case, the energy of the particles uh, is, uh, uh, is increased by slowly increasing the magnetic field uh, around the plasma. And, uh, and heating by making use of neutral atoms, I mean, neutral particles, in which the particles first accelerated as ions are, are subsequently neutralized before introducing them into the plasma. So we, we have a particle accelerated, say, A positive, but this A positive is neutralized uh, by charge, and then this particle with tremendous energy interacts with the plasma. So these are the different uh, ways by virtue of which the plasma can be heated. Uh, the, the heating of the plasma can be, uh, can be, can be brought in action. Now after this, uh, in, in the next video, we will be talking about the, the plasma confinement. And that, that will be uh, the point of discussion after this video.